Well, there's no greater feeling than sleeping in the wilderness, especially in the mountains with the clean, crisp air. I did get a little cold in the night, and I woke up, and I restarted my stove. It was pretty easy to start, and I stayed awake for a little bit until I got warm and then fell asleep. Woke up again, and it was morning. Sun was out. Walked outside. Steve was still there in his bear burrito. No animals got him. However, did kind of hear something. But it turned out to be nothing. What a beautiful morning. Slept well. And of course, for all those conspiracy theorists out there, can't go camping without the chemtrails, of course, you know. Besides for that, the fall colors are totally amazing. It's much too sad that it only lasts for like a couple weeks and it's over with. Having a walk down by the creek listening to the sound of water is so relaxing. Steve's little setup is pretty cool. I don't know if I could sleep in it. It's just a little too small, feeling closed in, but he really likes it. But getting the morning started off, getting some coffee brewed, enjoying the views around me, because today is going to be good. Just getting things packed up right now. Going to head out and explore a little bit, find a new campsite for tonight. Still a little wet, because we're kind of in a valley. It takes a little longer for the sun to come out, but see the beautiful fall colors that in a couple of weeks will be gone. Yeah. One last shot of this campsite. This campsite was okay. It would be a lot better if it wasn't for the logging. The logging kind of took away from the view because it would have been totally surrounded by trees and it would have been an epic campsite. Everything's packed up, leaving it the same way we found it. Clean, no garbage, no litter. Steve is flying his drone. And then we're gonna head out. Ready to roll and head out. Just going to explore the area now. Hand turn, go up the hill. Yeah, we'll turn right and we'll go about, I think it's 12 kilometers or so to the mine. And on our way down there, we'll check out, uh, see what we can see for camping. Left will take us back out to the crow's nest. they call Cool Mountain. Surprisingly enough, people still live in Corbin. I'm not sure if they work at the mine or if they are vacation homes. Either way, it's not totally a ghost town. 
you know, just burn down the road a little bit to turn around and just take a little jaunter down this gravel road where all the houses are. I got here I started thinking when the strike and the violence happened it was almost 100 years ago this place would have been basically out in the middle of nowhere almost like the wild west where anything can happen and probably no one would ever find out about it I kind of thought I was kind of hoping there'd be a lot more buildings standing still there could have been but at the same time a lot of it seemed to be private property too, and we weren't about to start trespassing just to see if we could get access to some old buildings. Well, after a quick trip to Corbin, we decided to head west, just past Sparwood to another place where there was a mine, and we wanted to see if there was any ruins left that we could possibly look at. We did find some ruins. I believe these were coking ovens for the process of coal. But if you didn't know that, they'd almost resemble something a lot more sinister. I'm not going to go into what though, but you can use your imagination. One thing that was pretty impressive though was the brickwork inside and how they made or stacked all the bricks to make that make that dome. That was actually pretty darn cool. But once again, this trip was kind of a bust. I was kind of hoping there'd be more. So back on the road, went to Sparwood, stopped at Tim Hortons. Just stopped, grabbed some Tim Hortons. Kind of head her out, find a new campsite. It's nice. They didn't make you wear a mask here like they do in Alberta. The Kool-Aid mask. We'll cross the bridge and there'll be a spot for us to air down. If you're ever in the area, this road has a seasonal closure, so you want to make sure that you're not going to be behind the gate when they decide to shut it. Otherwise, you might find yourself trapped. Anyways, this is the start of the venture, but we're going to try to find a place to camp. There was this trail. It didn't look like it was too maintained or traveled a lot but sometimes the trails that aren't traveled a lot can lead to some of the better places to camp however as we found out it just ended in that little knoll right beside the creek which is nice campsite across the way but that's a little too small for us since that trail was a dead end and the good campsites on the other side taken um we just finished airing down because we got to go back in the bush I aired down to 20 pounds. Steve is going 16. And hopefully we find something decent. It takes us down to the river, but too small to have a campsite. What I found, especially when it comes to exploring, is what you find or what you see on Google Earth and once you get out there are two different things. You find areas that look like they're great proposed campsites, but you get out there and they're nothing like what you had expected. This trail that did cross the creek a couple times, small creek, was actually pretty cool. I had my hopes up that there'd be a campsite inside here because we had water, we had 
thick, dense bush around us. I thought it would have been ideal for camping, but driving through, there was no no real great spot to camp. Like, there's a little opening right there to my right, as you see. Like, ideally, if you really wanted to, you could have set up camp there. But we decided, you know what, we're just going to keep on trucking along and see what we're going to find. So now we're back on the logging road, heading north again. So we're just doing a big loop. No, we are not lost. We'll come back to there, just hold down. I want to go up this road a bit. So I traveled up a road a little bit just to confirm where I was and my suspicion was correct. Um, I looked and found a campsite on the side of the road that was actually less than one kilometer from where we had camped the previous night. So we did like a 30 kilometer loop and ended up just hardly any distance away. So we just pulled down the little trail here that takes us to where the creek is and this campsite is a lot better than the previous one that we stayed so this is looking like our spot for the night we got the creek we got a fire pit right there. Spots to set our tents up. I think this will be all right. He'll still setting up camp. Probably got a couple hours of sunlight left before it goes behind the mountains. So might as well take advantage of what I got. Getting set up and I'm gonna Head down to the creek, get some water, and wash up. This is going to be pretty good. Steve is set up there. Fire pit right there. Creek behind his tent. I'm set up between the Jeeps. Love how the stove is so compact and a little bag as well. Well, after camp was set up and we had a real quick bite to eat, it was a perfect opportunity to get the drone up in the sky. At this time of the day, the light is pretty harsh, so we did the best that we could, but you could see the amazing, beautiful fall colors in the valley. Just so much to explore. One of the things, too, I noticed in British Columbia is that there's so many logging roads that unless you have a map, it'd be very easy to get turned around, get lost, because roads just keep branching off constantly. So if you do travel out that way, make sure you carry some sort of mapping system or have some sort of GPS navigation that you can call out for help in case if you ever get lost. Anyways, enjoy the views.
<laughs> Look at that class. How cold is that sucker? Uh, just after the war. Still going strong. Nice. Sun is set. Fire pit is ready to go. It's been a pretty good weekend. Did some exploring. Steve's going to freeze his, in his bear burrito. <laughs> <laughs> So probably be the last weekend with the fall colors. Leaves sure fell a lot today. Got the fire going. Next time we go camping, it's probably white on the ground. Snow. Using my little compressor. Steve is using my ARB because his S pod shit to bed yep. and he has no power to any of his accessories. Good thing for backups. Well, that was a great weekend to head out. Hadn't camped with Steve in a while. And the next time we camp, like I said, it's probably going to be snow on the ground. Alberta still has a fire ban, so no point going out. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, post them below. See you in the next one.